Fresh ball fall is upon us, guys. And you need to be in the festive spirit. Light a candle, get some pumpkin spice, and make sure your balls look nice with the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped. Nature may clear the leaves off their trees, but you'll need Manscaped's help to get you ready for that sweater weather. Get your pants puppies prepared for cuffing season with a trim as refreshing as a fall breeze by going to manscaped.com using promo code FRATCHAT for 20% off plus free shipping. Oh, yeah. And we are recording. I'm ready. You got to be ready. This thing's very scary today. (laughs) I can hear kids laughing and playing outside my window and i'm like wait till you're my age kids life sucks <laughs> <laughs> wait till you have to pay bills laugh now while you can little runt laugh now because when you're sure. older it's all downhill you should just teach them a valuable lesson that anything can happen in life by throwing rocks at them from your window shut up kids i fucking hate you <laughs> i'm trying to record a podcast here I know, bastards. <laughs> I should oh, tell no, them. I hear some advice. <laughs> so I hear some advice for getting older. Don't get sick or you'll go broke. Because insurance is a scam. <laughs> oh no! Here comes Mister Moore again with his robe that he never closes. <laughs> <laughs> get out, kids! <laughs> And uh, three, I do one. What are you doing? Testies in my mouth. Get on the ground, you fucking pledge. Ew. Welcome to the greatest podcast experience of your life. This is the Frat Chat Podcast. All young men like three things. Two. Featuring Carlos Garcia and Chris Moore. And what's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the greatest podcast in the history of podcasting time. It's the Frat Chef Podcast. I'm Carlos Garcia with Chris Simo Moore. How's it going, Mr. Moore? I'm great, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I feel like the intro took half my life away from me this week. I'm hurting now. <laughs> yeah. Like, Stop Woo-hoo. smoking. Nah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, feel, Better like not. I, I thought about before. it. Mm, better not. Yeah. I feel like whenever I drink the night before now, I'm just a fucking zombie the whole next day. Even if I have like five drinks, it's over today. I feel awful, but hopefully, luckily, I mean, I took a little water boy right before we did this, and at least my headache is gone, and I feel like I can take over. Do you take a full one, or do you take some of it? Uh, I did did the full one. I chug it down. I can't. (laughs) I literally put the tube in the water, and then I just drink it like, like it's like a beer chugging contest in college, and I sort of got it. It hits like within minutes so it's pretty quick you know if you let it sit just for a little bit it dissolves pretty well yeah it does it does but i stir it i walk away i come back i'm like oh look at that <laughs> just like viagra it's uh perfect just and you like know viagra. you guys when you guys i can recover when properly I too. my husband's drinks with viagra that's right and then you guys can recover properly too with water boy and get 15 percent off with proco with promo code FRATCHAT at waterboy.com slash FRATCHAT. So do it. Do it right now. Go get hydrated. You look better. Just saying. Uh, but well, Mr. I, had a, I had someone reach out to me about last week's episode. Oh, yeah. And they said, why on earth would anyone go through all that torment? Why? <laughs> and I have a question for you, sir. And I mean, a question. An answer for you, sir. And the answer is that when you start pledging a fraternity, at first it's fun and you build relationships. And then as it gets harder and harder, if you were to quit, you let down your pledge brothers who you're so bonded with. And you're like, well, I didn't do this for nothing. 
So by the time you're at hell week and everything sucks so bad, you're like, I didn't go through eight weeks of shit for nothing. Like I'm finishing this. I'm not a quitter. And then you remind yourself that everyone else in the fraternity, they all did the same thing, you know? So, so if the wimpiest little losers in the fraternity were able to make it and you can make it, that's what you tell yourself, you know? That's true. That's no one wakes up true. in the morning and it's like, I want to go eat gross shit. But but fraternities are very strategic. And it's not just fraternities at Hayes. It's also the police force. It's uh, different Military, branches of the army. It's, sports it's teams. Sports teams, yeah. Dude, they my high school would just settle out. Actually, I, I saw the news yesterday. My high school where I went to, which no, I, I, I know people in the football team. And they tell me that that shit was not going on at the time. Basically, some kids on the football team, like a couple years ago, held down some kids and fucking literally used a broomstick to to fuck them in the ass, Whoa. like as they're hazing. Oh, that's like that thing. Obviously, they told, <laughs> and they went to the cops, and the people literally went to jail. But the kids that had the broomsticks up their ass sued the the school district, school sued everybody, and they're getting like ten million dollars. Can you imagine fuck being that money. parent? Be like, right. like it, and, and I got that money, it, like, like, hey, and I feel like, bad because my my school like, was a, was a good school. Trouble pooping. Yeah, right. But I feel, I feel bad because my school was good. So, and like, it's, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna deal with a lot of cutbacks now. Ten million dollars is no chump change. But man, who the fuck does that? But uh, yeah, the, I asked some of my friends who were on the football teams, like, you please tell me that this didn't happen to you, right? They're like, no, there was like a little hazing that went in on the side, but never anything like that. That's ridiculous. You sure? Uh, it's a safe space. Yeah, it's, it's it happens. Gross. Hazing on the, happens a it. lot of places. Just there's things that qualify as hazing that are really just like almost lighthearted jokes. You know what I mean? It's like not so bad. It's not so serious. In some ways, it's even kind of fun. Like I loved having to work out during pledging. I was like, great. I don't have to go to the gym. This is fantastic. I love scavenger hunts. Yeah, that was awesome too. That's considered hazy, but <laughs> or I like, had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, and, and if we had to drink, you know, loved it. The uh, I love there was a, there was an event where you had to eat a bunch of hard boiled eggs. I fucking love hard boiled eggs. That was my dream in life was to eat a bunch of hard boiled eggs. So they don't even know that I was like having the time of my life. So some, you know, I don't know. It was like it was lighthearted stuff. Some of the shit that we talked about is ugh, I don't know if I would. <laughs> I don't know if I would stick through the pledging process with some of the stories we talked about if that happened in our school, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, oh, the poop. You hear the, uh, sirens. You hear the sirens outside yeah, my they're window? Coming. They're coming. They're like, someone was talking about broomsticks and buttholes. We're on <laughs> standby because that's not right. Um, you know, I think that uh, making a pledge, carry around a pledge book of secrets and dressing up fancy with a shirt and tie on Mondays is also considered hazing. And to me, that that does, that's no foul there. Totally. And like, well, depends. You know, like I would usually wear like sweatpants and t-shirts to school or like jeans and a t-shirt. So like, I'm not going, I want to have to dress nice. It was like jeans and a button down and a tie. I look good. I felt good. You know what I mean? It was kind of nice. It was. And plus then you're, in a weird way, I was like happy to do it because I was showing off that I was fucking doing the frat. You know what I mean? Once I, once I won, once I bought in, because I did it sophomore year. My freshman year I was like, ah, fraternities are stupid. Once I like bought in, I was like, all right, this is kind of cool. You know, you're kind of proud to do it. So, uh, but you know, the shit that again, the shit that we saw. Mm-mm. Support for today's episode comes from Marine Layer. It's official. I've found the softest t-shirt mankind has ever made. Imagine the softest thing you've ever touched. Right? Think about it. Maybe some kittens or like freshly fallen snow. Now times that by a thousand. That's right, because Marine Layer is the go-to brand for great fitting and stylish closet staples. Based out of beautiful sunny California, eh? Marine Layer clothes are that perfect mix of laid-back style that also looks and feels premium. Plus, you know what I love about Marine Layer? It's just how their t-shirts and tank tops stay so soft no matter how many times you wash them. 
it's time to invest in a wardrobe that will actually last people for limited time only our listeners get an exclusive 15 percent off discount with the promo code fratchat 15 at marinelayer.com again that's 15 percent off with the promo code fratchat 15 at marinelayer.com not cool but you reminded me that someone actually commented to something that we shared uh you Uh-oh, recently shared said. a story about a lady who uh, refused to wipe her booty and uh, uses a cat litter <laughs> and uh, posted the clip on YouTube and did quite well. And this guy, Delta Default, commented, uh, dude, if she doesn't wipe the rear, what does it smell like in the front? <laughs> puke emoji, <laughs> puke emoji. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> that is a question. That I certainly don't want to think about, uh, but not good. It can't. It can't be good. It definitely can't be good. Ooh. What's his name? Uh, Delta Default. Delta Default. Let me tell you, she's single, and no one's gonna smell that front ever. <laughs> the moment yeah. someone comes to her apartment and sees a, a litter box and no cat, they're out the door. That is psycho behavior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. That's where we have Mr. Mo here for advice like that. It's perfect. And uh, well, mainly one guy that I have a new story <laughs> that I have to share with you. Uh, maybe he might disagree, and he might. You know, he sounds like a wild guy. He might uh, he might get down there because Doctor Gray Fang, the Instagram account with all kinds of content. Share this story about a British pilot named Mike Beaton who reportedly snorted cocaine off a topless woman's uh, boobies during a night of hard partying in South Africa shortly before a morning flight. And then right before the flight, he gets on the plane and he tells the, he tells the flight attendant, I've been a very naughty boy. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently uh, he decided to cancel the flight, you know, because he felt like shit. He was very hungover. He did not have any water boy in his life. Waterboy.com slash Ratchet 15. Do it. Uh, and uh, he decided <laughs> that he could not fly, and which is obviously the safe route. Uh, I don't know if you want that fucking guy flying the plane, anyways. But the lady. Uh, you know, the flight attendant decided to narc because it caught it cost the flight or the, the company like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, now he's in trouble and uh, I mean, he's not flying for the time being. There's like an investigation being launched and uh, who knows what's going to happen to him. But <laughs> I've been a very naughty boy. Uh, can you imagine being on that flight or waiting? Because you know that, like, it's some people were like just sitting in the fucking airport and just beat, like, just so mad. Listen, if he shot heroin and then he was like, you know, in the sleep mode, uh, you know what I mean? Then yeah. I'd be like, get me off this plane. But yeah. if, if any, listen, any pilot yeah. wants to snort some coke before flying, we're gonna get to the destination a lot faster, and I, I'm here for it. Snort all the coke <laughs> you want. You're not gonna fall asleep. Take, you know, once on my Adderall, snort that. Wake up. <laughs> That's it does sound like a president's son, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, have you guys checked his laptop? I think that will have the answers that we surely need. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Fuck the government shut down. No, no, no. We should find this pilot's laptop. Look at it a lot. <laughs> Look a lot. <laughs> Nothing better to do. Oh uh, no, Mike Beaton. And uh, yeah, he cost. It was a hundred and twenty thousand dollars that him canceling that flight cost the airline. I mean, fuck, that's a lot of money. So he was drug tested and no longer flies. And it doesn't say the results of the drug test, but I'm pretty positive I know how it came out. Oh. <laughs> Wink. You know what? I would much rather my pilot snort coke than, than um, 
uh, smoke weed. 100%. If you want to be wired, be wired. That's true. But the thing is, you can smoke some certain weeds. You know, smoke a little little, sativa. A little sativa. You know, makes you uh, nice and relaxed, but not sleepy. And uh, you can concentrate on things. But with cocaine, you know, those first like few minutes in that flight, he's going to be wired. Then he's going to come down. Then he's going to need more cocaine. Yeah. Or else, you know, he's going to get going. sleepy. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I... <laughs> when I hear, you know, the landing announcements, it's like, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we were about to land in sunny, sunny, sunny California. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you look over to the left side, you're gonna see some wild shit. Cause look at this turn. Woo! Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I'd rather. I think I'd rather my pilot just uh, smoke a little J before the flight. You know, put kick his feet up and let the radar do its thing. You know, but most of that shit like is two? like equipment. Aren't What's there that? Two pilots for every. There are. There's the co-pilot. Exactly. So you can put your Why feet up. Why does a co-pilot fly? Uh, oh, I mean, they could. Exactly. Like that. That's. A... I'd be so <laughs> Meanwhile, the weed guy, the guy on weed, is gonna let the co-pilot fly. But the guy on cocaine is gonna get very type A, and he's in the. In the... I got this. I'll do the manual controls. Woo! <laughs> so, okay, guy. Would say, if you want to suck my dick while I'm flying, and suck my dick. If you yeah, want to be hostile, right. okay. Okay. Yeah, very tight pair of cocaine. Let's like, if you're not sucking my dick, or we're starting a podcast, we're not doing anything here. <laughs> and now let's talk about Bitcoin. That's uh, that's kind of that's like it's the bit it's let's the business trend. You can't help it. As soon as you do cocaine, you start talking about Bitcoin. <laughs> I start a podcast with people. <laughs> Just can't help it. <laughs> it's a thing. I'm surprised we weren't on cocaine. We were just having to start this podcast. It's uh, it's just it just happens. Uh, but anyways, uh, Mr. Pilot, uh, Mike Beaton. I hope. Uh, I don't know if I hope to, that you see you fly again. Mr. Mo probably does over here. We're fifty fifty at the Frat Chat podcast. Uh, but get your shit together, sir. And uh, do that. I guess. I guess that flight attendant probably saved lives by narcing, but I don't know. Don't be a narc, kids. <laughs> no Yo, one likes a what narc. A narc. <laughs> you know she didn't invite him to, to the company Christmas party anymore. <laughs> I was like, eh. <laughs> at that point, he already canceled the flight, so at least he was doing the same thing. But, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, who knows? Uh, but anywho, Mr. Mo, that saved. Uh, that could have been a pretty catastrophic story. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because we're going to get scary. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Kind of I gotta like that. I like that. Because this week, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about scary movies. <laughs> Especially the deaths in scary movies because this week we're going to prepare you for fall season we're going to prepare you for halloween which is just about a month away a little under so you can watch some of these movies start getting yourself in the mood because we're going to give you the top 10 scariest movie uh scene deaths in horror movies it's gonna get freaky it's gonna get real freaky not like Mike Beaton doing cocaine off uh, some chick's titties. Freaky. But different kind of freaky. Scary freaky. You know what I mean? Like when you look down in between your legs and you see something that's not supposed to be there and it itches a lot, you're like, ah! You <laughs> Pretty scary the, shit. At the tip of your penis so, has eyeballs, you're like, oh, no. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, like that. <laughs> it's going to be real scary. But you look down and you're... Wee Wee has eyes. <laughs> that itch. Ah! If you aren't watching on YouTube, I was holding a penis of the animal. It's my favorite stuffed animal. It's the first gift that my husband gave me because he really knows <laughs> He snuggles me. that every night. <laughs> I do. They said it smells I like do. his ex boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. They can't smell any worse than his your foreskin, that is. PlayStation controller. 
<laughs> By the way, can you turn your mic up just a tad bit real quick? Yeah. How about now? Perfect. That's All good? Right. That's great. Okay. Uh, just want to make sure the people could hear your uh, beautiful voice. Let, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Well, can I start with a with an actually turn mention? down? That sounds awful. Oh, ew, ew. That's what your voice sounds like. Ew. No, just kidding. Don't turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You sounded like that. I told you. My See, well, you're gay. Like, what? <laughs> my agent was like, "Is this your real voice?" And I was like, "What? What? <laughs> what is it is?" <laughs> anyway, what are you, Michael Jackson? <laughs> Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> as soon as he hangs up the phone, <laughs> where's my fucking latte? <laughs> God damn it, well, Steve. <laughs> I have an honorable mention. And although yeah. I still think this movie should have qualified for the list, I understand that it's more science fiction. And <laughs> this is not a horror movie. <laughs> this is not. I watched this is it in the theaters as a kid. <laughs> Yes, exactly. This is the children's not the end to watch Jurassic Park. Yes, and, this is not a horror movie. <laughs> and I thought it was really scary. I still think for the average person it might be scary, you know. But anyway, uh, it's not a, yeah, a the slasher, average loser a slasher movie. It's it's um just scary. Anyway, the scene where it, remember the uh, huh? You can tell. It's not a scary movie because of its soundtrack. It's all like, for example, Jaws, horror f- film about a shark. You know, you're fucked. Meanwhile, Jurassic Park is like, well, they like fly in and it's like, whoa, look at this. Look at those things, Dr. Grant. And they all like make out, and then the kids are happy, and everyone's happy. And, you know, it's an adventure movie. So it's, it makes you, you're supposed to feel good after, you know. So, just saying. Wow. But what's your movie? What's your scene? What scared you? What made you poop your I just pants? feel like, okay, let me just set this scene at my house. Every night before I go to sleep, I'm just so tired. I don't think to check the locks. But before I jump in the shower, before I take a long dump, I check the locks of my door. It's almost as if I'm more scared that an intruder will see me on the toilet or naked than to slice me up in my bed. Does that make sense? That's fair. That's fair. So anyway, I just feel like the bathroom's a very sacred space. And there's a scene in Jurassic Park where the annoying lawyer guy uh, is trying to outrun the T-Rex. And then he runs into this little like shack, this little house, and he sits on the toilet. And then the T-Rex eats the man off the toilet. And to me, that's mm-hmm. such a breach of privacy because the <laughs> toilet's always a safe space. Always. Always a safe space. <laughs> the T-Rex should have waited a good 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Plus, we don't have like cleaner meal. tag, and you're like, home base, home base. You can't touch me here, home base. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, the T Rex would have had a better meal if the guy just pooped and wiped, you know, first. Uh, yeah. What are you yeah. doing, T Rex? You know? So maybe what makes this a horror movie is that that T Rex ate some dookie. <laughs> yeah. There's no other way around it. He ate some dookie. That T Rex is nasty. It's kind of like when you, when you eat a. Uh... Uh, shrimp and you take your fork or your spoon down the vein, the poop vein oh, in the yeah. back. Yeah, the poop vein. Gotta get the rid of T-Rex that. didn't didn't scoop out the poop vein. Mm-hmm. He went yeah, right for it. Bad meal. Gross. Get E. coli or something. <laughs> anyway, I think that is a very scary death. I That haunts me to this day. I think about it a lot and I think it should have been there. I missed it, but I understand that it didn't. Every time so Simo sits moving. down in the toilet, he looks up. <laughs> uh, yeah get out of here t-rex scary. <laughs> here's the thing if it has jeff goldblum in it it can't be scary oh, what a hunk <laughs> we're big jeff goldblum people here at the podcast <laughs> uh 
that upstairs? What the fuck? Did you hear that slamming sound? The slamming's probably next door. They're always doing construction. <laughs> it could be my neighbors or notorious fucking stompers. Or Julie, who's very clumsy. Who knows? But... Are, are your neighbors fucking? Nah, Ask that's him usually... for a play-by-play. <laughs> we did hear him. I'm not gonna lie. We did hear them banging uh, two nights ago, but <laughs> it's always like 15 seconds long, so I can't even get mad. <laughs> and we hear the bed like squeaky, squeaky. One time it was annoying because I was trying to sleep, so I like threw something up in the ceiling. <laughs> it went <"Pah!" laughs> and then they stopped. But uh, for the most part, it's usually literally like 15 seconds long. And we like Julie and I looked at each other like that was quick. <laughs> It's like, can't even can't, can't even get mad when it's that quick. Like you just want to cheer him on at that point. Yeah. Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> what a bad show. <laughs> oh man. But anyways, uh, I think that is the more of a horror than Jurassic Park <laughs> lasting that short in the sack. But uh, these movies that I have. Are all fucking terrifying. Uh, this these scenes fuck with me to this day. They fuck with me. So I'm gonna start with one that. Uh, uh, which one do I want to start with? These are all so fucking know. fucked. They're all so fucked. Okay, I'm gonna go with one that is very practical for me because literally, whenever I'm in the highway. Especially when I go to like Maryland or California where there's these big ass highways. Uh, it fucks me a little bit. Or like taking like a trip to like, you know, down to like Florida driving down that way. You see a lot of trucks. And this movie, Final Destination 2, fucked up driving next to trucks for me because of the log uh, pileup scene with the semi trucks that's in it. Where basically. They're like driving, and all of a sudden, like one of the logs in the fucking semi that they're driving by just like snaps off, and it's like they all start flying everywhere, and just mayhem starts happening. The crashes start going, everybody's screaming, and the car ends up upside down. And they're like, "Oh God!" Ah! And it turns out it's a premonition, and then they're like driving, but then it does happen. And it's just like scary as shit. It is so fucking freaky. And then the one girl, she couldn't put on her brakes because she dropped a water bottle. And the water bottle was preventing, was underneath the brake, preventing her yep. from breaking. Yes, yes. She's like, <laughs> oh, that shit freaks me out so much. Uh, it's just like every time I drive next to like a big semi with those logs, because you see them, you do see them on the highway. I get such a horrible feeling or the ones that carry like a bunch of cars on them. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I always like think like something they're going to snap off and it's going to fucking like fly off and land on you. So, uh, uh, uh. I had my, the closest I had to like my final destination moment was I was driving from Maryland to New York with Julie. And uh, there was this car. I was in the middle lane and on the left lane, there was a car and its uh, back bumper wasn't completely attached, and it was like flapping a little bit by the wind. And I just had a premonition that that thing was gonna fly off. So I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. And I literally moved over one lane and started passing the guy. And as soon as I got out of reach, the whole fucking bumper like flew off. Like, <laughs> it just went like, ah! And I'm pretty sure it hit a car. But luckily didn't, you know, crash or anything like that. But if I would have stayed where I was, it would have definitely like hit my windshield and fucked us up. So luckily I moved. But yeah, that was my final destination movie moment. I was like, and I literally think that movie in front of I remember telling Julie's like, uh-uh, I saw Final Destination too. I'm gonna fuck around this guy. Yeah, dude. I don't blame you. Uh-uh. Ooh, <laughs> that's scary. Support for today's episode comes from Waterboy. If you're hydrated and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. We all know that hangovers suck a big D. Am I right? What? Ew, no, man. Get your mind out of the gutter. We're talking about dehydration here. 
Perbs. And Waterboy is your hangover lifesaver, coming in hot with over three times the electrolytes of a liquid IV. Waterboy's weekend recovery pack is scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. All you do is take one of these little packets here, mix it with the 16 ounces of water, and boom, you're hydrated again. That's why you know what they say. If you use Waterboy's powder stack, you'll get your mojo right back. Oh, yeah. And for a limited time only, our listeners get 15% off of your entire order with the promo code FRATCHAT at waterboy.com. Our six-inch stack is packing. So get yours today and save 15% on it with the promo code FRATCHAT at waterboy.com. I know exactly what scene you're talking about. And then that girl who was a star of that of that movie she ended up being one of the regular cast members of criminal minds but she dyed her hair blonde for that oh shit that is her and every time i watch criminal minds i can't help but think about that scene in final destination <sighs> i'm like oh girl you dodged the bullet all right so my first one i'm gonna go with another final destination movie final destination three now we all know what happened to me in the tanning bed and for those of you who are new to the pod once upon a time, my long, beautiful, model-esque hair got sucked up in a fan of a tanning bed, and they had to cut me out of it, and I lost my modeling contract. <laughs> it happens. It was actually his pubic hair, and uh, he's just yeah. like hanging there like, ah! I was hanging upside down. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, chop off the dick. Just don't touch the hair. Um, so anyway... I, um, I'm really upset. <laughs> I, like, I'm embarrassed to cut my hair too short because I have a couple spots in my head where my hair doesn't grow. I'm actually going to ch- chop all my hair off today. See, I oh, yeah? This... Yeah, I decided. I just have so much oh, of it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy, all this? And where doesn't it grow? I've never noticed it. Um, three little tiny spots because I was scalped by the tanning bed. So anyway, <gasps> the tanning oh. bed was a very scary incident for me. So when I watched Final Destination 3 and there was the tanning bed death of Ashley and Ashlyn, oh, oh my God. I mean, it was a total flashback for me. So what happens in this scene is these two obnoxious blonde girls but super are in the tanning bed. <laughs> and then something happens when things fall in the tanning bed so they can't get out. And uh, they essentially get roasted alive the tanning beds malfunction and they are burned alive and they are trapped in the tanning beds and they yeah they simultaneously roast to death and they show everything like they show their skin starting to blister up and like bubble and and literally them screaming like it was they they made sure that to drag that scene on as long as excruciatingly possible to make sure you fucking felt it. Uh, so, yeah, I only did a tanning bed once as kind of like a joke before a senior prom with some buddies. And uh, I'm not gonna lie. It freaked me out. It felt like it was a casket. And I always said that. And then I watched that movie. It was like, Ugh. you see, it's like a fucking casket. Like I find it if you so get stuck relaxing. in there, you beat, you beat. And the tanning was popular back then. I mean, it still is. People still do it, but like it was like really popular, especially you know this was right around, uh, right before Jersey Shore came out, and then, then it got even more popular after those guys did it. But like a lot of people are doing it. So let's say you do get stuck in one of these machines. It's gonna take a while for the attendant to come check on you. You know what I mean? So you're gonna be in there for at least forty minutes. <laughs> well. <laughs> Um, there was a law in Howard County, Maryland. I don't know if it was Elegant City specifically or Howard County. I think it was Howard County. Uh, that was the first of many counties to start this new law that stated you could not tan under age. And the bulk of their business was like, like, um, teenage girls who were getting ready for a dance, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that kind of exactly. killed the, the tanning salon business. So then a lot of tanning salons were changing the bulbs from UV to like red light therapy um, just to try to salvage some part of the business. But it's kind of a failing business. Remember there used to be tanning salons everywhere? Hollywood yeah. tan, LA tan, sun, Jamaican me tan, whatever. 
you know. Yeah, man. At college, it was like a thing. Like I remember my college girlfriend would go all the time with her friends. You know, it was very common. My mom used to go tanning. It was very common. Jersey Shore, Tan ETL. Naked. It's super common. Those guys still do it, though. I think I'm pretty sure I still watch the show. So, Polly D has a tanning bed in his house. <laughs> My parents have a tanning bed in their house. Really? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. I just need to know Did your mom tan naked? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't ask her oh, that. Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's not really a conversation that comes across. Mama Garcia, come across the Garcia family oh, dinner. Please tell me, hey, Emma, did you tan naked? <laughs> She's like, ew! <laughs> You're just like your uncle. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's next on your list? We we covered okay. Final Destinations. Yeah, there had to be. I mean, there's so many Final Destinations, and they do a really good job of making some really fucked up deaths. So there had to be. A couple of their mentions in there, the two and three, good shit. But this next one is one that I never thought uh, I would say a J Lo movie would terrify me, other than Geely with Ben Affleck. Was, Oof, that was <laughs> <laughs> that, that was bad, folks. Yeah, that was what are all <laughs> good lord. <laughs> like anything would have been better than that. <laughs> that was scary bad. But she was also in a movie, uh, I think it was around 99 or 2000, called The Cell, where uh, half of this movie takes place inside a serial killer's brain. And obviously, the serial killer is a really fucked up guy. And uh, now they're in his brain, so they're in his territory, and he can pretty much do whatever he wants in there. And it's kind of like hell in there. And at one point, <clears throat> the serial killer gets this guy named Novak and subdues him and straps him down on this table thing. And then he cuts into his abdomen, right on his belly. And then with this like primitive crank machine that has these spikes on it, he basically attaches the intestine. Clack! And then he starts cranking the machine and literally like almost like a like sausage. The fucking crank starts pulling out his intestines slowly while he's still alive, like screaming for his death for, you know, for, for his life. And the crazy thing is like machines like this actually did exist. This was like a torture thing. Slowly pulling out someone's intestines was something that did happen. So. Uh, oh, I'd be so painful. I would be like, just kill me. Yeah, just, just kill, kill me. me. Don't yank out my intestines. They didn't just do anything to me. you. The whole, you know, just the cutting alone, awful. Then you're like bleeding out and they, they would do it right so you would stay alive and it would take a long fucking time for you to die. So, ugh, and your intestines are really long. That's the thing about it. I'm in there. Uh, like your intestines go, how long are your intestines here? I believe it might even be like, a quarter mile. How long are your intestines? You have two. You've got the small intestine and the large intestine. Yeah, the large intestine is at least 15 feet. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It says the small intestine can measure about 9 to 16 feet, while the large intestine is roughly 5 feet long. So it's like 20 feet. Oh, wait, so feet. the large intestine isn't as big as the small intestine? Well, you know, it's a... Uh... It's not the length is not necessarily the only thing that counts for here, you know. You, you got to count for girth. You got to count, you know. It's just, <laughs> you know how it works. Oh, <laughs> it's not about That's the reach. Really upsetting to hear. I'm just saying. Ladies say they like a short showed better <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> the long skinny one, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> just what the ladies like with their intestines. I hear. I prefer a chode personally. <laughs> I prefer a toad on ice. That's <laughs> right. A nice toad on ice for yes. Thanksgiving. Okay, so I'm gonna. Well, I mean, me ugh, yeah, good that on. is scary. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go to the movie Scream. So I kind of mm. feel like Scream was like the predecessor of like. A, a, like a gazillion amazing 90s horror flicks 
Yeah. I think the screen sure. put horror back on the map. And the opening scene with Drew Barrymore, ooh, my gosh, so scary. What a way to open up not just the movie, but like an era, you know? Yeah, I and really so- hope that too. If you watch that movie, I actually re- literally like two weeks ago watched that whole opening scene. Uh, don't even know why I watched it. It was just you know, in my head, but it was so good. So full of action. It's scary as fuck. <laughs> and it's, you know, the whole being on the phone thing. Ah, you know, that still fucks me. Someone was going to call like, what's your favorite ah, scary movie? Mm-hmm. So that, it like, really I don't up. know. How big's your dick? What's the <laughs> uh, so, oh my God, you guys. I think I'm in love. And no, I'm not talking about my girlfriend. Ew. God, ew. Oh, God, please don't tell her I said that. But I'm talking about the clothes from Marine Lair. I swear, my body has never felt clothing more comfortable. And right now, I'm wearing the hemp cotton pocket tank top in lobster bisque. And I freaking love it. Mm, lobster bisque. It's not just delicious sounding, but it's so light and soft yet durable that I'll definitely be able to wear it everywhere. From hitting the beach, going to the gym, or just rocking around town, this tank has me covered. I also got some t-shirts, Henley shirts, and pants that literally just came in for me today, so I'm extra excited. Here, look, check them out! Ah! And how many times have you felt that you were in between sizes when buying clothes? Well, maybe you've been drinking a few too many lately. You know, I hear that. Or you've been hitting the gym extra hard. What's cool about Marine Layer is they have in-between sizes. So now you finally no longer have to make that difficult choice between medium and large and large and extra large. We're trying to make Marge a thing. Now, for all my music junkies, Marine Layer actually just dropped a new line featuring classic bands like The Grateful Dead, Bob Marley, Cream, Led Zeppelin, Crosby, Nash & Stills, and Pink Floyd. Each shirt features one of Bill Graham's legendary Fillmore posters. You can finally rock a great fitting and quality band tee that's going to last. Whether you're going on a date, the office, or keeping it casual while watching sports, Marine Layer has the best shirts for every occasion. And did you hear about Marine Layer's respawn program? Everyone has a bunch of old tees collecting dust in the back of their closets. Marine Layer will send you a prepaid recycling kit and literally give you a $5 credit card per shirt. Yes, $5 credit card per shirt. You heard that right. You actually get paid for your old tees, all while helping Marine Layer keep tees out of landfills. Out with the old shirts and in with the new. And I think that we can all admit that a perfect tee can be hard to find. But look no further than the Marine Layer. And for limited time, only get 15% off the promo code FRATCHAT15 at MarineLayer.com. That's promo code FRATCHAT15 for 15% off your entire order at marinelayer.com. Saving your closet one shirt at a time. So um, not only did the death initiate with a phone call, but it ended with a phone call from between her and her family. Remember, she was on the phone with her mom, and then her mom could hear her getting sliced open. Yeah, that's Oof, Man, on so many levels. Horrifying. That so fucked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say the only thing that helped this scene out for me is that scary movie did a very good spoof of it with Carmen Electra. Oh yeah, she, they did and, running uh, through the sprinklers. Yeah, and then she's like stabs, and the implant comes out, <laughs> and then like the the mom and dad or or the dad is driving into the house, and they hit her, and you see the mom come up giving him a BJ. Like, what was that? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, that that actually helped me tolerate that scene much better because it does it did fuck with me, especially you know being like younger and staying home a lot. Around yeah. That time. Oh my gosh, everyone I had really a babysitter when I was growing up. Either yeah. you babysat to make some extra money, or you were babysat. Right. So. <sighs> yeah, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. Those How movies old were you are... when your family started to leave you by yourself at home. Probably like eight. I was young. Maybe even younger. Maybe seven. I think it was probably like 10 or so. My parents would be right back. And be like, can't we just stay here? Yeah, exactly. We'll open the like, door for anyone. Okay. <laughs> I want to go to the mall. You're going to just watch TV. I want to play with my wrestling action figures. <laughs> I had. Uh, Teenage but, Mutant and, and, Ninja Turtle. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Yeah. Turtle, Fuck yeah. Turtle, Turtle Power. 
And uh, I will say the Scream movies, they have such a good balance where they're a lot of the characters are very likable. Yeah. The movies are kind of funny too, but they have good action. Uh, and they it's one of the few where they make the characters realistically fight back for their lives, at least. You're sure, like the fucking guy could oh, have, the killer could have died 90 million times and never come back. But uh, it's not like a sure they do the some tropes where you trip and fall while running and shit like that, but they always like you know make it just enough of a back and forth where you think someone has a chance and then they find a way for the killer to get that last sneak where you're like, ah, you son of a bitch, mm-hmm. you're so close. So they they have such a good way of keeping you hooked that uh, it's I feel like sure the movies are super successful and the franchise is still popping them out but these movies are a little underrated in some ways they're very scary and very well done uh good stuff good stuff i don't know why i just went on my scream tangent but (laughs) (laughs) i love you david arquette (laughs) you deserve better yeah she's still in one david arquette i don't think i don't think he'll be making a comeback in his character Died pretty violently in one of the recent ones, but uh, Courtney Cox still rocking. Mm-hmm. And Neb Campbell wasn't in the last one, but she was in the one before, so it's open that she might come back. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, story time. Back in college, I decided to give myself a little ball trim before going to a Halloween party because you never know how your night's gonna go in the love department, so you always want to be prepared. Unfortunately for my boys down below, this was years before Manscaped came to my life. Oh, God. I cut myself so bad, you guys. I could barely walk that night. So imagine me trying to hit the dance floor after a few drinks later that night. Oh, my God. My shredded balls would not let me move. I couldn't hit the Dougie, the Soldier Boy, the Stanky Leg, the Gangnam Style. All the epic moves that made the 2000s fun. So needless to say, I went home alone that night. But those days are over, folks, thanks to Manscaped. Because Manscaped is here to make sure you never have to go through this yourself. It's time for nice flannels and cozy socks, but we can't forget to trim our balls. By now you've heard of them, but it's time to join the 9 million men worldwide using Manscaped and get that kit that covers it all, baby, the Performance Package 4.0. It starts with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer with advanced skin safe technology that reduces nicks and cuts to make breaking the leaves a lot less painful. Plus, the Lawnmower is a technical masterpiece, people. It has a 7,000 RPM motor, a multi function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock, and a built in 4,000K LED spotlight to help you see the parts of the body you haven't looked at in years. And once you clear the driveway, the performance package comes in hot with products to cool you down. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner. One to prevent stink and one to clear it up. With a soothing aloe vera formula, move over pumpkin spice, fresh balls are the smell of the season. And the performance package 4.0 caps it off with two free gifts. The Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. That's one to hold your Manscaped goodies and one to hold your man goodies. So bring in the fall right and get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code FRATCHAT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code FRATCHAT. As the leaves fall, make sure you have it all with Manscaped. Uh, you just did scream. I'm going to go with one that uh, is a classic. Uh, and it's a monster that was one of the ones that always intrigued me as a kid, but would freak me the fuck out. And it took me, it took me until I was older to be able to sit through these movies. And I'm talking about Hellraiser. I've uh, never seen a Hellraiser Pinhead? movie. But I know who yeah. he is. Pin- Pinhead. Really? Pinhead is scary as shit. It's, uh, so basically, this is at the end of the movie. Uh, in it, there's an antagonist named Frank, who he's basically the one that releases Hellraiser. He, he tricks Pinhead and his crew to essentially do his bidding. and uh, But he's a bad motherfucker. He's so bad uh, that even the bad people think he's a psycho. <laughs> even the monsters. 
<laughs> think he's a psycho. So that says something. But it still fucked me up because he goes out in the most painful looking way. And basically, Pinhead and his crew figure out that he's tricking them. That he's been tricking them all along. And they don't take kindly to this. So the guy turns to face the main girl in the movie. And he's like, you tricked me. Because basically she had him say his evil plan out loud. And then Pinhead and them overheard. And then it's like, you tricked me, you bitch. And he pulls out a knife. He's about to go stab her. Well, all of a sudden, uh, this chain comes like flying from the wall with a fish hook attached to it. And it like goes through his hand. Clack! Then he had the knife. He's like, ah! And then it pulls it back. And then another comes out and grabs the other hand with another fish hook. Clack! And it's blood! Now he's like spread eagle like this. And uh, then they literally like Pinhead and his crew start just shifting out chain after chain after chain. And they start showing them all like like an extreme close up. So like the fish hooks going through the skin and shit. And like by the time it's done, his face literally has like a bunch of fish hooks sticking out and the chains are like pulling his skin. And he's just like Ugh. But he's still a sadistic fuck. So yeah, I think he said something like uh Jesus wept or something. And then they drag him by the fucking skin. And then they just literally drag his ass to hell where he will spend, the, I guess, eternity in these awful so, chains. Hellraiser like, is. So Pinhead is the Hellraiser, right? Yeah, essentially. So it's like Hellraiser is like a crew, I guess. Oh, okay. So Pinhead, is his powers that he has chains he can throw at you? Does he have more powers than that? Yeah, he has. He's essentially kind of like the devil, essentially. But he has. Uh, a crew of different monsters and they all have like these crazy different powers, but yeah, they have a bunch of different things. They just, they can just basically come up with what the devil could come up with while he's in hell. Now, uh, and they just torture you in those awful ways. So, so, so Pinhead, like, since he killed the bad guy, does he have some redeeming qualities? Um, well, not really. Oh, uh. He just doesn't like like being tricked. It's just, (laughs) it's just the girl was smart and figured out how to put Pinhead against this guy, and then you know they let her go. But uh, her crew still died (laughs) really violently. She just, you know, she. I think she's the only one that lives. I guess Uh, she's pretty. So, yeah, she (laughs) she was pretty. Pretty people get privileged. She was smart. Pretty privileged. Yeah, (laughs) privileged bitch. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I think he's just more so like he doesn't discriminate who he kills, but you know they have their own self interest. So as long as you can play that right, you're okay. But they still wouldn't have hesitated to kill her. Yeah, it's just you know they I guess they owed her one, <laughs> but but her creatures are fucking awful. But yeah, uh, he could let's see. Pinhead is invulnerable, so you can't hurt him. He's ageless. And immortal, he can teletransport. He can magically disguise himself as other people, and he can transform humans into xenobites, which are those awful creatures that he has. And he could summon, you know, other hellish forces, which are his buddies. Like this is one guy, like teeth. (laughs) But is he double jointed like me? Hey, oh, yes, that's right. And the, and the chains, uh, which he could conjure to rip people up. Uh, yeah, those movies fuck me up. Uh, it's weird. Ugh. Well, Ugh. that is scary. And my next one, I'm just going to keep it going with Scream, even though I I know I just talked about the movie Scream. We, we both talked about it. It's a great movie. But another death of mine, which is so degrading, um, that's all my list, that I had to talk about it. So... Um, Rose McGowan was like, wasn't she like the younger sister or something in, um, Scream? And she was just like the nipple girl because she always had hard nipples and she didn't wear a bra. Do you know what I'm talking about? (laughs) She was so hot. (laughs) Yes, yes. And, uh, in real life, she used to be with, uh, Marilyn Manson Mm -hmm. and she went to, I think it was the VMAs in this, I don't know if you can call it a dress because it was more so like... (laughs) 
like three like this like see-through strand thing and she was in a thong and it was all black and i just remember you know i might have been like 15 at the time and i was just like oh my god mm-hmm. <laughs> i had to go take a couple cold showers after that one <laughs> what a beautiful yes, beautiful woman anyway so hot um and she shaved her hair her head recently and she still looks fucking hot i mean so anyway um uh she was fighting off the monster and scream in the garage and she was fighting back pretty hard and the garage door was going up and down so she thought there would be a good idea to climb through the doggy door (laughs) but i don't think her breasts allowed her to do so It was, it was the nipples that were too hard. Breasts. <laughs> clank, clank. Didn't allow her to crawl through the doggy door. And then as right. the as the garage door went higher and higher and higher, it really just broke her in half. She mm. died in the doggy door. Yeah. In the doggy door. Ugh. I mean, I can't think of anything more degrading. I know. I feel like at that point where you're just going to try to go through a doggy door, you're, you're better off just trying to fight for your life and take a fair chance to kill this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, I, since then, every time I've been in anyone's garage, I'm always looking for the closest exit. Totally. Like, this is totally. scary. Never Garages know. are scary now. I didn't know my, uh, my point of entry, my point of exit. <laughs> but this is another one that... Uh... Was spoofed so good in a scary movie when <laughs> the big girl's in the garage <laughs> and she tries to go oh, in the doggy yeah. door. And the killer's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And the door, the, the, in the original one, you know, he opens the garage door while she's in it, I think, and she like gets sliced in oh, half yeah, essentially. <laughs> but in the scary movie, the door can't lift the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like struggling <laughs> and it just eventually falls off the rack <laughs> oh, oh god <clears throat> that movie got me so good <clears throat> but yeah that's a I would never go through a, an enclosed space like that because of that movie mm-hmm. I will say it. that is so true that fucked me up uh-uh. it's almost like a, like in elevators when they've shown where it's like the elevator gets stuck you know what I mean? And then it's like, there's like a crevice and they say, oh, you know, just slide through. Fuck no. You pull this elevator up or push it down to a fucking even floor. I'm going to slide myself through here. Like, what are you talking about? I think it's just going to. I've been pulled out of an elevator before. When I was working at Macy's Optical in Chicago on State Street, uh, I went to the, well, the downstairs bathrooms through the food court is like a whole nother species of people you got people like like live in the bathroom they're they're like brushing their teeth and they're yeah. like um they claim the stalls as like their own individual homes it's just not a safe bathroom experience so anyway yeah i would take the elevator up to the sixth or seventh floor and this particular instance i had to pee i get on the elevator and i get stuck in there it just like gets stuck between floors and i was in there for like uh just over an hour i guess before they got me out but i was like just walking around in a circle and like clenching my butt cheeks. You know what I mean? Because I had to pee so bad. Yeah. Uh, but I remember the security guard was like, hey, man, don't worry. I'm here if you need anything. And I was like, well, I do need to pee. So you don't have to stand here. <laughs> he was like, um, I, I'm here if you want to talk. I was like, no, I don't want to talk either. I just want to get out. And I want to go pee. That's um, oh, my God. And then this, like, old, old fireman pulled me out. This old fuck. I was like, man, this isn't even, like, a hot story. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, he still made love to the guy, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> it wasn't who you wanted. But, it wasn't you know. who I wanted, but I'm not going to pass up some good fireman dick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He was 86 years old, he 86 but you know how to beat the back and work the middle, you know, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, what's next on your list? Uh, you got two okay, left. I'm down to two more. That's right. Anything from Jurassic Park? And, uh, yes, that's right. Jurassic Park. I knew it. Jurassic Park three, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, but I'm going to go with, 
this franchise is literally still going, so there had to at least be one death in this list from it. I'm talking about Saw 3. They're always the so rat. graphic. Yeah, those movies were so graphic. And I'm confused because, I mean, I have to say, I fell off of them after like Saw 5. They're about to do Saw 10. And before I say my death, I'm confused because the whole plot of Saw 2, or maybe it was Saw 3, was that the killer, the old guy, had cancer and that he was going to die. And then he starts leaving these, essentially he wants to finish the job that he's doing, but he had really bad cancer. And now I saw the preview to Saw 10, and they show the old guy again. It's like, what? I thought you died of cancer. What the fuck? You can't. Maybe it's back in time. Maybe maybe it's set in the early 2000s. Ooh, maybe it's a maybe prequel. Maybe. But just like, what? Saw, what? Saw 10? That man had cancer. No, you're <laughs> only old when you start acting like it. But when, when, that's, you're, that's right. when you're killing people left and right, I mean, it sounds like young people behavior. Because if you beat cancer, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, that's a very inspiring, but <laughs> who knew that that in Saw, in the Saw franchise would be the inspiring story of the serial killer beating cancer to get back to the thing he loves most, <laughs> torturing people. Uh, who knew? It's, a, it's kind, of a, kind of a homely movie. But Saw 3, they have the rack which is this device. It's honestly so fucking horrifying. Uh, this dude is putting this device and he's basically like being completely held. He can't move. He's just fucking just beat. And it's got like a thing on his head and then, you know, his arms, legs, they're all individually, everything individually gripped. And obviously just like everything saw, everything's triggered over time. And at first, during the first trigger, the device twists and twists and twists until one of his arms is broken. Ugh. Maybe it was his left arm. He just like, and it's like, Aah! and then it does it to his left leg, I believe it was. Uh, but it's one of his legs. Aah! So now he's already fucked. But then the last one, it does it to his neck. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's like whoo, the, the whole feeling of just being tied up and not being able to move or do anything is one of like the things that fucks me up so much uh, that I just like ugh, I would not ever want to experience but then you add then on top of that they're fucking ripping your goddamn arms and legs off essentially uh, it's almost like a crocodile that's, that's how they attack you they bite you and then they spit until they just That's rip true. out That's true. That is arm. true. So it's like, it's it's kind of like you're being in, in, in the torture device that kills you like a crocodile. And then you're still stuck there. Like, there's more pain to come. At least the third thing was the neck, but like, imagine if they did both arms and then both legs. And then, ugh. Ugh. Mm-hmm. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. If I wake up and I can't move... <laughs> That's like my biggest fucking ugh. Ugh. no 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 that like really fucks me up. Well, like uh, speaking of not being able to move, I got I got one for you. You ever heard of the movie called Tremors with Kevin Bacon? Yes. The one movie didn't Classic. show. Shit. The one movie didn't. Show That's shit. right. <laughs> it was in the extended cut. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the extended cut, but it's not cut. You know what I mean? Um, the tremors are actually uh, they're CGI'd and large versions of his dick. Yeah, yeah that's what we didn't know. That's exactly what it was. Very girthy. Good for you, Kevin. That's what they use. Um, yes. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I really, in a million years, never thought that Waterboy could work on the hangover I woke up with last weekend. It was so freaking painful. I really thought I'd be in bed for at least two days. But boy, did they prove me wrong. Because thanks to Waterboy, oh yeah, I was not just able to get out of bed, but I kicked the day's booty too. All while saying goodbye to that epic, epic, nasty hangover. Now, most hydration powders are packed so full of sugar that they just cause you to crash even harder later on. Not to mention you have to drink so many of them just to get the electrolyte replenishment that your body really needs to recover. Well, folks, not anymore. 
because Waterboy has nine times the electrolytes as a Gatorade just in this stick. Inside each stick, there's some ginger for that nausea in there to make your tummy feel better. And they also include L-theanine to help calm your nerves and reduce your anxiety. Plus, their scientifically backed formula truly brings you back from the dead. Let me tell you guys, it works. But maybe the best part about Waterboy is how amazing it tastes. Their most popular flavors include strawberry lemonade, lemon lime, and my life-saving blue raspberry here, which I can personally thank for saving my life last weekend. Mwah! These flavors are so good, you're going to actually want to drink these. And Waterboy is also gluten-free, caffeine-free, dairy-free, vegan, and made right here in the U.S. of A. Let me tell you something, folks. A lot of things get worse as you get older, but your hangovers don't have to. Waterboy isn't a magic cure, but it's pretty goddamn close to one. And it's time to try it today. Hundreds of thousands of people already trust Waterboy as their hangover cure. It's time to stop dealing with the anxiety alone, people. For a limited time, our listeners get an exclusive 15% off discount when they use the promo code FRATCHAT at waterboy.com. Again, that's 15% off the promo code FRATCHAT at waterboy.com because Waterboy has got you recovered. So at the very at the very beginning of this movie, um, there was uh, an older couple who um, were building a, a new house. And so they just broke ground and they were celebrating building a brand new house in the middle of nowhere. Why? Who the fuck knows? Who wants to buy a house or build a house in the middle of nowhere where you have to drive an hour to the closest convenience store? Not a supermarket. Yeah, just to get a Walmart. A convenience store. You know what I mean? That. If you if you want to go watch a movie in the movie theater, that's going to be a three plus hour drive. Hell no, no way. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to get any internet or any cable when you're in the middle of like nowhere? You know. Anyway, totally agreed. So her husband um, went to go investigate some stuff, and he got eaten alive. They took him uh, from under the ground. <laughs> Swallowed him whole. So she, uh, in an effort to... He's never been happier. Never been happier. (laughs) In an effort to save herself, she runs into their car. And they're playing some sad, sad music. And then this tremor ends up burying the car. She's buried alive in her car. Uh, And Uh so either the um, dirt compressed so much and broke the windows and she was buried alive. Or she probably suffocated, or maybe the animal went in there and dragged her out. Who knows? But right. what a way to go, right? You think you're safe when you oh. when you're in the car and you lock the doors. You're like, oh, okay, I'm safe. No, bitch. This animal nope. can bury you alive in this here car. Oh, girl, you better. While you got oxygen, you better say your prayers. Hail Mary, full of I grace, know, Lord's man. with thee, boo boo. Yikes. And that's the thing about living in the middle of fucking nowhere. Ain't no one gonna come and rescue you. I know. Screaming, 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 and your screams aren't heard. But to be fair, I feel like in the city, uh, which there was a murder in the 70s where this lady was literally in the middle of the street, was getting stabbed by this guy. And like, it was literally, imagine like you're, you know, on like Fifth Avenue or something. And so there's a bunch of apartments that everybody could hear <laughs> this lady scream for her life. Something like 57 witnesses saw and heard this lady screaming and not one of them called the cops really and she like yeah she like got away from the killer at first but she was bleeding out so the killer essentially followed the tracks and then followed her down this alleyway and finished the job there and then i don't think they ever called the killer to be honest i never finished the documentary that i I saw this on but it's about how not necessarily (laughs) living in a crowded area will get you help uh yeah but let me ask you this if you are in the middle of nowhere and you saw and you locked eyes with some man tweaking on meth, that to me is more horrifying than when you're on the train and you lock eyes with someone tweaking on meth oh, because yeah. you're surrounded by people. It's just something that's, that's totally. you know, makes you feel safe when you're surrounded you're right. by people. But in the middle of nowhere, when you see something out of line, oh, hell no. If no, someone said, true. hey, can I ask you a question in the middle of nowhere? answer is no no you cannot ask me anything how'd you get up out here in the middle of nowhere you must know somebody no, you're right that's a good point on the train they're like you can ask me a question train. sure where are you trying to go 
I got you. You know what I mean? Totally. No, that's right. Yeah, I don't want to talk to anybody in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that's a very good point. Touche. Especially if this guy came up. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, for him, I might make an exception. <laughs> I said, hey, brother. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> Get in your car right now. Dude. Oh, Lord. Well, we are each down to one more on this list. Better be good. I say, oh, I say my, my creepiest for last, I think. Because this movie is an oldie but goodie. And they've remastered it so much that it still really holds up. But it was even back then, it just filmed really well. Where you, you could watch the OG, and it'd still be terrifying. And I'm talking about Alien with uh, a young Sigourney Weaver rocking that shit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm talking about the chest busters, particularly. Oof. And so the whole thing, the first time you see one, you know, the crew is sitting there eating. It's like a space crew after they fucking around with these aliens and uh you know they're they're all talking passing on the food all of a sudden this guy starts like oh i don't feel so good type thing and you know at first they're not taking him seriously one guy's like hey man the food's not that bad in here like uh, what's wrong with you uh and all of a sudden it starts getting worse and worse and then he starts bugging out and then they lay him on the table he's like, ah, 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 ah. He was, like screaming and all of a sudden, like something like shoots out of his chest, like it like, explodes, and you see like blood splatter everywhere, and everybody screams. And then all of a sudden, this fucking like creature starts coming out of his goddamn chest. It's a chest buster, and the guy's literally like tweaking, like twitching, and sh I guess in shock as the fucking thing's coming out of his body, and they're all looking like horrified, and the chest buster is massive thing. And then, like, runs away and, uh, you know, like, spoil the rest of the movie. And, you know, but the fact that this fucking alien can just be sitting in your body right now Ugh. and you not know it. And then you just explode. And aliens exist you, like, because the government finally copped to it. They were like, okay, okay, okay. okay yeah. Yes, yes, there are <laughs> aliens. And yes, we know all about it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. But that fucks with me. And especially because. There are creatures that actually operate like this. So I think we're just lucky. Well, there are tapeworms. We just don't, they just don't explode out of us, but <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, um, and there's these wasps that they found out in 2018. Hold on, Julie got me some coffee. Thank what you, sorority are these monsters in? Monsters in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a parasitic wasp. That they found in 2018 in a study that just like the aliens, they lay eggs inside of or on top of other insects. And as the young wasp grows, they literally eat their host body from the inside while like the animal is still alive. While, while it's still in an egg form inside of it, the other animal is basically still alive. And uh, eventually the, the young wasp will you know, eat enough of him to get big and then just exit his body and then leave the corpse dead. Holy fuck, Julie. What are you doing? What's she do? <laughs> She's like tripping over everything. Just get out of here. Go. What are you doing? It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Julie. Holy she's shit. She's allowed to be a mess on her birthday. <laughs> we're, on the, we're on the last one. Holy fuck. Um, and as the young wasp grows again, it like eats the inside of this thing. So, I mean, imagine like, you know that there's some creature inside of you eating your body from the inside and there's nothing you can do about it. You're just waiting to die, essentially. That's why I don't, but, if I'm ever in, let's say, Mexico and they and my friend's like, hey, you want to go cliff jumping into this stream? Hell no. I don't know what kind of parasites are in that water. No, no, no. Um, I've read um, things. There's parasites that are trying yes. to your urine. They, they swim up your pee hole. They swim up your pee hole. I was just about to say ah, that was that is like the biggest. That <laughs> can you imagine? And especially those things, like they have to like pull them out. 
sometimes with like tweezers Ugh. or something. So they had to go in there, like surgically remove them. So that's even worse. No, thank you. Wham, bam, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, might pee in the ocean, you guys, but not in the Amazon. <laughs> I'm not but peeing in the I go to the bathroom before I go places. Yeah, it depends where I'm at, to be honest. And I use my litter box. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I bring it to go. <laughs> okay. So last on my list, I don't know what it is about kids and horror movies, but kids always freak me out. And I thought mm. that poor Georgie, he he got it done dirty in chapter one of It. Yes. Ugh. Especially because... It is our mom. I mean, kids usually... Yeah, they chop his fucking arm off, and they're like showing it with like him, like with like a bloody stump. And usually with kids, they'll like just have the kid disappear type of thing, or the kid will be like an evil ghoul. But they never really show a child getting like mutilated like that. So that was like, and that's like the opening of the fucking movie. That's like the first thing that you see. So George, uh, George, yes. It's so freaky, and and honestly, like, I was hesitant of how this movie could be remade, and fuck, once I saw it, it terrified the fuck out of me. The actor who plays Pennywise is so creepy and good. Uh, I helped him in my shop before, and he was whiny with his girlfriend, or I guess his wife. He had a newborn baby with him, and he was like... um, like arguing with this wife over what color sunglasses to buy. I'm like, buy them both. You're good for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're rich. To be fair, it's probably the baby's fault. Uh, babies are kind of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> they probably hadn't slept in days. Yeah. But you know, uh, in the movie, I don't know if it's the first or second one, there's a part where he starts moving both of his eyes like in different directions. That shit wasn't CGI. He could actually do that. <gasps> really? Like, he did that himself. Like that was him, which is wild so he was born to play this creepy ass role <laughs> yeah <laughs> you okay are you having a stroke over there <laughs> uh, i'm trying to do it <laughs> am i doing anything impressive uh yeah you you look like you should not be allowed near a playground anywhere again but <laughs> other than that <laughs> you look like you want to tend the rabbits george <laughs> oh, i tried to do something cool a cool trick Oh, you did something all right, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was cool. You made a list. You made a list. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, Georgie, they did him dirty. And then they kept showing him the movie, just the creepiest settings after the fact, uh, like coming out of the water and stuff. So, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that movie fucked me up, too. Uh, Pennywise was so creepy. Ugh, so creepy. Ugh. So, okay. Well, that was your list, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, That's it. Let us know. <laughs> let us know what you thought of our top 10 scariest horror movie death scenes. And uh, let us know what you thought of Simo's honorable mention. Is Jurassic Park a scary movie? Let us know. Yes. At Flat Chat Podcast. Of course it is. Settle this debate. Because Google agrees with me, but you know, maybe it's just the the evil online elites swaying the opinion. <laughs> so let us know on Frat Chat Podcast, on Instagram, on Facebook, on X, formerly known as Twitter, on at YouTube, uh, and you can follow me as well at Carlos Does the World on Instagram, on Threads, on X is Carlos Does the World on TikTok, uh, on YouTube. It's everywhere. Get up, Carlos Does the World. I'm there. And with Mr. Simo over here, you can follow him as well at Chris.more.comedy on TikTok, on Instagram, and see more comedy on X, which I still fucking hate. I can't do it. It's Twitter, damn it. Elon Musk, if you're listening, it's Twitter. Not doing it. Not doing it. I call There's it a X. license plate in my neighborhood that says the letter Y space Elon. <laughs> Why, Elon? <laughs> Why? Why, Elon? I love it. So let us know again. Frat Chat Podcast. Carlos Does the World. Chris.more.com. Buy some Manscaped. Save uh, 
twenty percent off. Use promo code Frat Chat. Get yourself some water, boy. Say fifteen percent promo code Frat Chat fifteen, and get some Marine Layer. And save fifteen percent promo code Frat Chat. Oh yeah! And on that note, Mister Mo, it's time to roll. So why don't you get us out of here? I'd like to motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Okay. So I gotta check on that crashing sound that you heard earlier. I think you died. <laughs> but anyways, we'll be back next week with another edition of the greatest podcast in the history of podcasting time. The Podcast. Podcast. Happy See ya. Week.